Hey, Green Mountain Maniac here. Just wanted to go through a couple things I've done to the mag loop since I first got it up and going a while back. Uh, there's a series of videos on my channel regarding the 15 through 75 meter magnetic loop. Uh, some things, uh, problems I ran into and uh, straightened some things out. Uh, I have since ditched the PWM, pulse width modulator, not a good idea to use on a magnetic loop or anywhere around an antenna. Uh, try it, you'll figure it out in a hurry. So I ditched the PWM and I stepped, made the step down. This motor drive is a 2 RPM motor, works absolutely perfect. What I've done, uh, currently, uh, let me go through the setup here quick. Uh, the way the loop is configured right now, it's set up for 40 meters. And what I've done is I've gone from these types of straps, right here, the flat strap, to a very large, I think this is maybe 4 gauge or something, wire. Uh, soldered on a couple, some uh, ring terminals. And currently this is jumped from the termination of the first loop to the start of the second loop and the capacitor starts here and it ends over here. Uh, so I've gone from basically a coil, it's still a coil type setup, but they're, they maintain, uh, they're parallel all the time. And what I do is I jump from here to here to continue the coil around and bring the capacitor in on the opposite, the termination of the second coil works very very well. The 80 meter element, another element goes on over here and I basically jump uh, the termination of the second loop over to the start of the third loop and move the capacitor, the other side of the capacitor to the termination of the third loop. That's how that works. Now for 20 meters um, I remove this jump strap and I jump these two loop, these two connection points together, these two connection points together. And I basically run the capacitor same place here and the same place here, except that these two loops jump together instead of creating a coil. I have two additional wires that I remove this and I jump this to this and this to this. And that loads really, really nice, very effective on 20 meters. For 17 and 15, I have to remove the second loop. Um, just too much, too much there, uh, will not load. This is a 10 to 100 picofarad capacitor. And what I found is that the capacitor, to get these to load on 20, 40, and 75 meters, depending on how many loops I'm running, uh, this tunes roughly in the same spot on all the bands in the 30, 40% range of the capacitor so there's anywhere from maybe 30 to 50 uh, puffs of capacitance to get these to tune um, very and very easy to tune uh, this is this takes about 10 turns this capacitor to go from end to end um, the problem with the two I wouldn't recommend going to a 2 rpm motor if unless you do it unless you have all your bands tuned roughly within a couple turns because obviously uh, if it only turns two revolutions per minute you're sitting there for a few minutes for it to get from one end of the capacitor to the, to the other that's why I went to a 2 rpm motor very very effective with this setup the way this is set up another thing I found is that the feed point um, I redid the feed point. I inverted the coupling loop and anybody who's put a field strength meter on any type of loop antenna, I'm not talking about a mag loop here, I'm talking about a quad or anything like that or a circular loop. The maximum RF field is generated 180 degrees from the feed point. So if the feed point is here, the RF field is, is uh, the hottest maximum here. So I figured I'd flip this around and see if I can increase the coupling to the driven loops. This works very well, very, very well. The problem I ran into is I want to be able to isolate the feed point where the coax actually connects to the driven loop, uh, the coupling loop. I, I don't, I can never remember which one is which. I'll call this one the coupling loop for now. Um, 
the feed point I wanted to get away from the overall antenna so what I did was I drilled a hole this is one inch PVC the whole frame is built on this and this just slides out this is a fiberglass rod so I took a piece of RG8X brought it out here and this pops right out take this out here uh, for transport and when I come go to set up I'm trying to do this with one hand it's fairly snug as you can tell and there's a hole that it there we go oh I didn't get it <laughs> I can't do it with one hand but uh, uh good grief what is going on here Stand by. There we go. Need another hand. I wanted it fairly snug. Obviously, I don't want it flopping around. Um, so I brought a piece of RG8X to connect to the feed point over to. This is how I do my. Uh, if I have to couple uh, a connection, provide an SO239 connection in, in free space. Uh, this is three quarter inch. I think it's three quarter inch PVC tubing. I take a bulkhead connector, SO239, I drill out the end cap. Oftentimes you have to grind the end cap down on a bench grinder and, and reduce the thickness, the material thickness, so that you can get the nut on the back side of the 239. And then once I get that in, I just thread the coax through, connect it all up, uh, smack, uh, clamp, wrench it down good and tight, and I put a bead of uh, uh, Gorilla super glue on the inside uh, just to prevent anything from happening spinning if you get a little overzealous you might spin it and break the pins happened to me before uh, but this works really well and then my coax uh, just jumps into that and you'll notice that it holds the feed point well away from the antenna uh, just some things uh, that I found and uh, hope that helps in your build anyway 7-3 hope to hear you on the bands